I'm uh, doing this video um, kind of in a reply to a, a thread I saw on Reddit about playing, and it's actually a very common request, but how to play in a trio situation or how to fill in between chords. Um, those are kind of two different questions. Well, actually, the question was even closer to how do I solo in a trio situation, which I've been in several trios, and it is very difficult. I mean, um, after I joined my first trio, I realized how much I had a huge amount, a huge growing respect for people like Jimi Hendrix and Eddie Van Halen who could fill out not only the rhythm and uh, not make it just sound like simple power chords and strumming along and doing a rock thing, um, but also when they got to their solo sections, they were able to really fill it out and imply the chords. A bass player is going to help you out a lot there. Um, you, you don't need to necessarily imply the root in, in those progressions. Uh, so you can, you're free to kind of move around. Um, so the other, the other question is one of if I play a chord and then do some fills and then play the next chord and all that. And the, the progression um, example in the question on Reddit was just a 1, 5, 6, 4 progression. Um, and what that means, it's, it's in, the, in, for example, in the key of A, there are basically seven chords. You have the one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, seven chord, and the one chord. Um, and so a, a, a one, five, six, four progression is going to be a progression where it goes from the one chord, which in the key of A would be A. Then if you count up five, A, B, C sharp, D, E, the E chord would be the fifth chord. And then F sharp would be the next one, which is a minor chord, so it would be F sharp minor. And then the four chord, a, B, C sharp, D would be the D chord. So one, five, six, four progression would be A, E, F sharp minor, and then D. And that's the progression I programmed here with drums and bass only. Um, so I was just playing over that in the intro of this video, just so you could kind of, I mean, I, I was just riffing. It wasn't anything I wrote. I just was kind of riffing um, and trying to fill it out. I don't know if I was doing something that I would consider. I really wouldn't play that busy under a singer. So that might be considered a solo at that point. Um, if I was playing under a singer, I might utilize some licks and things like that and play chords. One thing, you know, I'm doing a little bit of cheating. I've got some reverb and a little delay. That kind of extends that first moment. If you hit, you hit that chord on the downbeat, then you got that to kind of play over. So it's almost like you've got a, a pad or something. Um, I could do a lot more reverb. We all know we could all turn on our, you know, reverbs and let it ring for forever. Um, but in this case, it's just more for me, it's just more of a confidence builder so that I have that there. And then my, what I'm thinking, there's a lot of different things going on. A lot of it is just pure rote finger memory stuff that I've done a thousand times. So it just naturally comes out. How did I arrive at those licks and how did I arrive at those ideas? A lot of it comes from just knowing the notes in the chords and the notes next to the chords, the neighboring tones. Um, I also call them sus tones. Um, for example, you've heard the term triad before. Hopefully, if you've watched my video channel, you've heard a lot of theory. A triad is three notes. That's what basic chords, major and minor chords are made up of, the three notes. And in the case of an A, it's A, C sharp, and E. That's another way to refer to that is one three five. So the fact that we call it one three five kind of implies that there's a two four six, and so the two four six in this case would be a B minor triad, and every one of those notes are what I would call neighboring tones to the one three five. I, and part of the reason I chose A is so I have the open A string. See, there's the two one. Okay, I'm going from the one to the two and back down to the one. Um, I can go from the from the from the C sharp to the D, which is a three four suspension. Okay, and then I can also go from the from the E to the F sharp, which would be a five six. You see that, so I utilize the two. And, then I, and the other thing that I try to really do, and I think this is real important, is be aware of what chord is coming up. You really want to set that up. You want to try to 
get to that chord and that next chord in the most musical way. You really don't want it to be A chord, A licks, E chord, E licks, F sharp minor chord, F sharp minor chord licks, uh, D chord, you know, that kind of thing. You want it to be kind of this fluid line that makes sense musically going from each of those chords. Um, one of the things that I tried to try to do when I was um, learning guitar was to try to create licks that would lead me from one chord to another. You know, just as, as simple as like a bass line. You know, a bass line like that really implies that the next chord is going to be C. So that's kind of what, you know... chords coming as I play them. So the E, I'm sorry, the A chord, I'm going to that sus, and I, that's leading to the E chord, and then I'm doing a chromatic thing to the F sharp minor, and there's the, the D chord. So I'm using, I'm using ideas that connect chords rather than just ideas that land on chords specifically. Okay, that's also very important. So many things I could talk about. I'm so sorry. I, I, <laughs> watch this video more than once. You probably get something different out of it every time. Um, so getting back to the sus things. Okay, so the, the, the those are all sus tones over the A chord, okay? Uh, over the E chord, same thing. It's uh, E, G sharp, B. And so the susses are F sharp, A, and C sharp. So there's the E. Now over the F sharp minor, F sharp minor note triad is F sharp, A, and C sharp. And the susses there are the G sharp. It's kind of a minor second kind of vibe. Um, the the, the uh, B to the A. There, you heard that, and then the D to the C sharp might be a little weirder, but that would be technically what would be the six to five suspension. So be like, um, and so you can hear uh, the. The, the six to five suspension over the F sharp minor and then over the D. The D is the one chord where the four suspension is is actually a whole step above the three, not, not a half step above the three. However, you could do either. Um, if you do a G over the F sharp, I mean over the, yeah, a G from the F sharp in the key of D, um, you're gonna kind of imply this bluesy sound because that, that one um, note will be out of the key of A. There's no G in the key of A, it's a G sharp. Um, so, in the key of A major. So, for example, over the D, see, that would be suspending the second and the fourth, I mean the third, yeah, the second and the fourth in, in the key of A. So I'm going to, uh, from D and F sharp, I'm going up to E and G sharp, and then I'm going to F sharp to A. So that's in the key, and that's it's very Lydian sounding. Okay, but if I wanted to use this, the regular standard kind of suspended fourth half step up from the third, that would be a G. So you can see this. I'm going to just go through the progression. So you can hear there. Where it's very Rolling Stonesy, you know, it sounds like something Keith Richards would play, and it totally is. Um, so that's 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 kind of my lesson right now on talking about um, triads and the sus the susses. So the triad again is one three five, and the susses would be two four six. And you can go to those and then come back. You can go uh, away from the one to the two, or you can go from the two to the three. You can go from the three to the four, the four to the five, the five to the six, the six back down to the five. You can go to the six to the one. Uh, we didn't bring in sevens for the most part, uh, but that's those are all tricks you can do. Um, I'll just play a little bit more over the progression for the outro. <laughs>
Mm-hmm.